welcome back, Tangerinis. In honor of us just hitting 50,000 subscribers, which seems totally bonkers to me, we are going to be doing a video on the dark side of being a YouTuber, but also why it's kind of awesome. Hopefully you enjoy this inside look and special window into our YouTube life. I like what you did there. We're not gonna tell you all of the negative stuff and then all the positive stuff and all the neutral stuff. We're kinda gonna mix it together because that's really what it's like being on YouTube. The first thing on our list is there's a huge problem with YouTubers getting burnt out. <laughs> <laughs> this has happened to us like mm, three to six times over just one year. You try to meet this YouTube monster algorithm which says post one video per day approximately 10 minutes long and hit all these other metrics and then you will be successful. But really it leads to a very unhealthy recipe of constantly being on all the time, trying to push out constant content and it's just not healthy for your mind, for your body, it's just a kind of a terrible recipe for burnout. The first thing on the awesome list is how many incredible experiences we've had. Seriously, over this past year of doing this, we've experienced more in that year than we have in our entire life before that. Number two on our list of the dark sides of being a YouTuber are the mean comments. And you would probably expect this, anyone that's gonna put content or their life out on the internet, that sort of comes with the territory, but that has personally been something that I've struggled with throughout the course of our channel. It's just people being mean for the sake of being mean. They get all powerful because they're behind the protection of a computer screen in some unknown location in the world and just say whatever they want to say to you to hurt your feelings. Just depending on your personality, mine in particular, it just after a while starts to bother me a whole lot and I start questioning everything about myself. And these mean comments go as far as threatening to have us killed, to rape us. This is no joke, not at all. Things like this, they're the reason why some YouTubers quit completely. We have a friend, he or she has stopped making videos because of comments like this. I think a reason why a lot of YouTubers avoid talking about anything bad that happened, about the negative side of things you might say, is because these mean comments come in 10, 100 times more when you start getting more controversial, when you actually speak your mind instead of trying to pander to everyone. Number two, why is it awesome to be a YouTuber? Well, never in my working life have I had as much freedom as I have now. We literally get to decide when we wanna wake up, go to bed, when we wanna go eat, where we wanna go eat, as much or as little as we want to work in a day. So much freedom, it is insane. So one that may be good or may be bad, depending on your personality and what you're like, your success or failure depends totally on you. How hard you work, how well you promote yourself, how much you improve. Creative ideas, self-motivation. Exactly. Interactions online, I mean, everything is up to you. You have no boss as a YouTuber, except maybe <laughs> in Alaska. I mean, she is constantly hounding us. Get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> so, lots of freedom, but also lots of responsibility. That freedom and responsibility leads us into the next thing on the bad things about being a YouTuber. You would not believe how much work it is. I feel like a lot of people think it's just recording a video, maybe a little bit of editing, then you upload it and yeah, good to go. Based on some comments we get, I think people think it's like almost like a live stream. We just take the video and it magically uploads itself, creates its own thumbnails, responds to people. I mean, <laughs> wouldn't that be nice though? Seriously though, you would not believe how much work goes into the back end mm -hmm. to make a successful channel from marketing to SEO. So many things that go beyond shooting and editing the video. Especially for our particular case, being a travel vlog, all the planning and effort that goes into booking accommodations, f uh, contacting people for tours, mm -hmm. everything that surrounds that. I mean, think of a vacation you took and how much work just went into making that all happen. That's like constant for us. That's our just, whole life. Yeah. Our life is that <laughs> all the time. <laughs> that on its own is a lot of work. If you're doing it as a hobby, you, you really have to love it. Something that is amazing about having a YouTube channel is the community that is created over time. I used to have a food blog and I ran that for over 
two years and never, ever did I create the type of community that we have with you guys on Tangerine Travels. There's just something about video content that allows you to create a group of like-minded people who are passionate about the things that you're passionate in, and that is kind of incredible. And honestly, without that community, without you guys, I don't know where we would be today without all the yeah. recommendations mm -hmm. of things to do, things to see, what to eat, where to go. Another dark side of having a YouTube channel is that it is not all glitz, glamour, and money like some people might think it is, myself included, I looked at YouTubers as like, they're probably rich, like they can probably buy whatever they want and go on fancy vacations and stuff like that. Like, oh, you have 100,000 subscribers, whoa. Yeah, like they must be really raking it in. <laughs> wrong -o. You will have to work for a really long time before you earn anything from your YouTube channel. For us, it was like five or six months before we were monetized. We were working 12 hour days basically that entire time and earning nothing from it. Yeah, or so, longer. Or, or longer, I mean, we, we there's, it's just a lot of work. Can we harp on that a little more? <laughs> so if you're going into it for the money, that's gonna be an even bigger dark side for you because it's probably not gonna come for a long time and even when it does, it's gonna be like, Woo, 97 cents today. <laughs> and that leads into the next downside of being a YouTuber, and that is once you start earning money, it is very unpredictable month to month. Your views will go way up and way down, which drastically changes ad revenue, how much you can make in affiliate marketing and things like that. This is why something like Patreon is so important for us, because that is the one thing that's consistent every month. No matter how our videos perform, no matter how our channel does, we still have that consistent income. And so, if you're unfamiliar with what Patreon is, basically it's a way for you to support creators that you like, whose content like ours that you're watching for free, something like that. We use it as an opportunity to give you guys even more perks, more content, more awesome stuff like monthly live videos that are private for patrons at a certain level only and other things like that. So if you're interested in getting in on that action, we'll put a link to that below. And a huge shout out and thank you to all of our patrons. You really help create that stability for us and make us confident that we can continue doing this month after month, even if things go bad. With YouTube. With Apocalypse. YouTube, exactly. <laughs> so the next thing is kind of neutral. We aren't really sure if it's an awesome thing or a dark side because it would depend on the person and the circumstances and everything, but that is, at a certain point, you will probably start to be recognized by people in everyday life, like just going to the grocery store. I honestly never thought that it would happen as soon as it did, like when we were around a thousand subscribers. No, our, the first time we got recognized, it was when we had 250 subscribers. I mean, even that is just it, which bonkers. Is, blew my mind. I wasn't expecting that, I sort of thought like, to have that status where someone would recognize you on the street, you would literally have to be a celebrity, like in a movie, like a box office movie. But it happened. The dark side of that though, or like the not so great side for us, is there's times like when we lived in Ahihik and we would be walking to breakfast. I am not very friendly or awake or just like social at all if I haven't had coffee and breakfast in the morning. So to bump into like six people on the way to breakfast, there's just like not much I can, <laughs> you know, can't can't be my chipper self without coffee and foods. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and both of us are introverts too. Sometimes extroverts and introverts, those are terms that are a little bit misunderstood, but basically what an introvert is, you can be social, but you recharge when you're alone. So after some social interactions, you need some time to recharge by yourself. To retreat. So when we start getting recognized a lot, it's very taxing on us. Yeah, and nothing wrong with the people that we say hi to. In fact, I think that's super cool to finally mm -hmm. meet someone that's on the other side of the screen, because right now we're talking to a camera, so. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing on our awesome list, never crossed my mind that this might be the case, but this really is the best, the most thorough journal we could have about our life and about our travels. Mm -hmm. We look back at our old videos and it's so much 
more than looking at a picture or reading a journal or something like that, having it in video form. The next reason why it is really cool to be a YouTuber, you're kind of forced to learn a bunch of new skills that you might not learn otherwise. For me, that was video editing. I resisted learning that my entire life despite doing graphic design in college, and now I went from <laughs> really, really mm, in the beginning to kind of good at it. And this is a skill I can take with me anywhere in life, even if for some reason Tangerine Travels dies on YouTube, which hopefully it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, so if you start a YouTube channel, regardless of whether it goes anywhere or not, you're going to learn video editing, you're going to learn how to market yourself, SEO, and other very marketable skills. One thing that's really cool that we absolutely love is all the wonderful comments you guys leave. Just an outpouring but, yeah. of love, encouragement, um, helpful tips, all the positive things that you can think of come through in the comments. But then on the other side of that, there's people who will judge everything about you and criticize everything about your life. Everything, everything from the way that we do our hair, if we do it or don't do it, makeup versus no makeup, what we're wearing, what we say, what we don't say, what we do or what we don't do, the money we give out, the money we don't give out. I mean, what we say in a video, in every video. Everything like, you can possibly how, think, f think of is suddenly on the table for people to just devour you. Over. That's something that really eats at you and it, it's very, very difficult to get through. Because that, it's constant too. It's uh -huh. not it's not just an isolated thing. Trolls are all over the internet. You have to like what am I trying to say? You have to build a get a thick skin. Build a thick skin. Develop a thick skin <laughs> there and, <you> go. <laughs> and just figure out how to get past that mentally, which can be a challenge one that I'm still struggling with, still trying to build, earn, buy, what do I do? How do I get a thick skin? <laughs> <laughs> Develop it. <laughs> Develop. <laughs> Along these same lines and also on the dark side is that privacy kind of goes out the window when you're putting your life online and especially in videos. And there's a YouTuber I really like called Gentle Whispering ASMR. She was talking about when you get bigger, and especially as you grow, you're gonna have people trying to dig into your privacy, so you have to make decisions about what you want people to know and what you don't want people to know, and coming to terms with the fact that whatever secrets you want to keep, there's always gonna be the possibility that those get out. So whether you're trying to keep your real name from people, family details, old secrets, pictures, like whatever it is, at a certain point stuff like that can start coming out. And I think part of it is just like accept it because if you're going this route, if you're being on YouTube, that's probably just gonna happen eventually. But it, that's certainly a dark side about being on YouTube. With all the bad things and the difficult things about being a YouTuber, I literally can't think of another job in this world that I would want more than this one. The concept of going back to like a nine to five job, mm -hmm. especially in the US, I'm just like, uh, that comes with the fact that both of us are very entrepreneurial. So I don't think we ever would have fit into the traditional job roles that are sort of set up in society. Some days we're like, oh, should we really be doing this? And then I try to think of another job I'd want more and I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so another perk of having a YouTube channel is that we all of a sudden have all these unique opportunities to get things for free sometimes, to meet up with people that we would have never had the opportunity to before. Sometimes people offer to buy us dinner and things like that. We could get um, tours for free or often we'll do them in exchange for making a video assuming we like the experience. We've had people reaching out to us offering to stay in their home or their hotel for free. Someone even offered to fly us to another country on an all-expenses-paid trip for two weeks. Also free asterisk. A lot of these things yeah. aren't exactly free. It's like, you can go on a... <laughs> Alaska is freaking out. No, it's not Alaska. It's the neighbor dog. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if it's free, like, you can get this tour for free if you spend 15 hours creating a video and, like, editing it and doing all the work that's associated. So, like, those are still perks, like we're still getting to do these experiences or staying in certain yeah. places, but they're not without work. It's I, I still consider that a, a big, awesome, big one in the awesome category. Yeah, for sure. 
another type of opportunity, a financial opportunity is that come up. Companies wanting to pay us to put their product into a video or something like that. Along these same lines is a dark side of being a YouTuber and there are these mystical cool things called brand deals or partnerships which sound awesome and it sounds like a great opportunity to earn hundreds or thousands of dollars but a lot of times it means they're wanting you to whore your channel out excuse the phrasing <laughs> to promote a product or a service or whatever and they want you to say specific things about it um, and promote it in a certain way and that's why you haven't seen very many on Tangerine Travels because we have decided that we're not going to promote something that we wouldn't use ourselves if we don't actually love just for money because it's not right my moral compass goes I would argue though <laughs> They haven't seen a single brand deal on Tangerine Travels. We've become affiliates, but oh, those yes, are yeah. products we use, of services we use, of services we like. We don't consider that selling out because that's something we honestly feel you're going to get a great value out of because we've gotten good value out of it. And then there's the brand deal side where it's like, hey, I'll pay you this amount to say this in your video and to put this product in your video. And not only is that often kind of selling out, but it's also a whole heck of a lot of work to arrange those and to mm -hmm. find good ones. That's another one of the many things that's behind the scenes that you as a viewer never see. Along these same lines is another dark side. What you see on a travel vlog or on a YouTube channel is the best, most shiny version of itself. On a typical travel vlog typical. or... So this might not be groundbreaking or earth shattering that what people post online isn't exactly what it's like in real life, but I think it's easy to forget that, that this really cool experience that you saw of someone traveling during a day is like perfect, the life is amazing, but you don't see all the times where they got stuck in traffic for five hours, or the water was out for three days in their apartment and it was disgusting. <laughs> like that type of stuff, you don't see. So there is a dark side, it's just life. Many channels choose not to show those things because it comes with yet another dark side. When you get towards the more controversial things or you actually show reality and bad shit that happens in your life is you start to get a lot of hate for it. We haven't experienced much of this one personally, but that's because we haven't asked. As a YouTuber, when you have a certain audience, companies want to use that for promotional purposes. So let's say we want to do a video about the coolest hotel rooms in one city and we go to a hotel, we might be able to see their biggest suite if we ask or get a press pass or get backstage at some event or see something the general public doesn't get to see. And as they say, what do they say? Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> they say who's they <laughs> serious dark side of being a youtuber is that after a while it's very likely that you will start to question everything you say and do and wear and eat and everything else this goes along with the criticism one but with the constant flow of negativity i mean like we said there's tons of positive comments too but as much positives come in there's those really strong negative ones when people want to be mean they can be really really mean you really start thinking a lot you're like okay if i say this i know i'm going to get this criticism so um, how can i what else can i say to prevent these comments from coming in it's just it's like a constant. snowball effect another dark side to being a youtuber is that it's very possible and very likely and definitely definitely going to happen that you will run out of creative energy those creative juices will just sometimes dry up and although it's nice not to have a boss that's a plus no one's telling us what to do no one's telling us what to do either so <laughs> if we run out of crap that we want to put in a video We've decided not to make a video until we do, but you you really have to figure out ways to get those creative energies flowing and figure out a way to come up with content because it's all up to you. And I feel like this kind of goes hand in hand with getting burnt out. When you get burnt out, you lose creative energy and you really have to yeah. try. And You're not running on all cylinders anymore. <laughs> Before we wrap up this video with our one last dark side and our one last awesome thing about being a YouTuber, please consider subscribing to our channel and go on that bell to get notified when we put out our new videos. The last thing on our dark side list is that 
being travel vloggers specifically, travel is expensive, so it's a lot of times not possible to have a home base, like your home apartment that you're paying steady rent for, and go out and travel to places. And we covered this more in our last video, our biggest regrets about moving to Mexico, which we'll link there, I believe. <laughs> but there's a lot of stressors that come with that. That's definitely a dark side to specifically travel vlogging, but just travel in general. And the last on our awesome list, unofficially dubbed awesome list. I've never had an awesome list before. <laughs> <laughs> Although most YouTubers probably don't make nearly as much money as you think they do, there is huge earning potential. Seriously, some YouTubers make tens of millions of dollars every single year inside and outside of YouTube with ad revenue and all the sponsorships and stuff that they get. If you have an audience, even if you aren't earning any ad revenue, you can make a living out of it. There's a million ways to make a living if you have people watching your videos. So, and the entrepreneurial spirit, the mm -hmm. motivation. So if you want to make money on YouTube, you absolutely can. Ad revenue aside, you might have to get creative and you're sure as heck going to have to work really hard, but it can be done. You can do it! <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this video, you guys. Please subscribe to our channel if you want to see upcoming videos. And if you think someone else would appreciate this, share this video with a friend. But one last thing. <laughs> Gong that bell so you get notified the next time we put out a new video. And, and we will see you in the next one.